This weekend, save big at PetSmart. Get 50% off on holiday toys, treats, apparel, gear, and more. Anything for PetSmart. You. Anything for pets. Listen, we can't leave you without celebrating one more Dolly Parton achievement. Adding the title of Dolly the Rock Star. Hello. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Take care, y'all. Marching in the streets with sticks and stones. Don't you ever believe words don't break. Happening now. Thanksgiving is a time for togetherness, but it's a difficult time for military members who are away from their families. How hundreds of Air Force trainees here in San Antonio are spending Thanksgiving. Are you still eating your Thanksgiving turkey? Don't look now, but it's almost time to tackle that holiday wish list. We've got some advice on buying a gift that the whole family can appreciate. And minus some patchy morning fog tomorrow, plenty of sunshine takes over for Black Friday shopping plans, but the cloud cover rolls in this weekend ahead of our next cold front that moves in for early next week. We'll get you all the details and time it out coming up in just a few. The news at five starts right now. And thanks for joining us. Hope you and yours have had a wonderful Thanksgiving day so far. That's right. And thank you for keeping us company. Yeah. The 44th annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner officially in the books. That's right. The San Antonio staple once again did not disappoint. About 20, 25,000 people sat down and they ate. They enjoyed it. Our John Paul Barajas is at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Now it's cleanup time, John. Yeah. That's right. The cooking is done. The food is gone, but the work is far from over. The last meals here were served about 3.30, about an hour and a half ago, but there's still plenty of employees walking around back here and they have a lot of cleaning up to do. They're, we're told it could likely take about a few more hours before they get out of here. But this is what the festivities looked like earlier this afternoon when dinner was still underway. Thousands of people getting some good food and seeing everyone enjoy a warm meal is one of the reasons why the Menez family says the hard work is worth it. The namesake of this event, restaurant and business owner Raul Jimenez started this dinner back in 1979. Now about 4,000 volunteers team up with his family to carry on the legacy. Feast of the heart. It's people coming together. I mean, when you look at the news, you actually see good here. You see humanity coming together for the right cause. And that's why San Antonio is the best city in, the, in, in, in to me, the world. Now about 21,000 people were fed here at the convention center. About 4,000 meals were taken out for delivery and all the leftovers, those aren't going to waste either. They were given to a nonprofit who is out on the streets right now, giving it to people who are experiencing homelessness. At the Henry Beacon Gonzalez Convention Center, John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Because it's a lot of food, you don't want it to go to waste. So if you're spending the holiday with your family and your loved ones, well, that's just another reason to be thankful because today hundreds of Air Force trainees are spending their first Thanksgiving away from home. It is tough for many of them. Our Daniela Ibera takes us inside Lackland Mess Hall to see how the Air Force trainees are spending the holiday. Awesome. All right, enjoy. It's good to see you guys this morning. Take care of each other, okay? It's a Thanksgiving treat. You want a little bit more? You got to tell me, okay? Don't be shy. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> the 321st training squad at Lackland Air Force Base. All right, some of this can be overflowing, okay? But that's okay because it's Thanksgiving. Enjoying a traditional meal as served by their commander. A little bit of everything. I like it. Yes, that's what I do when I go to a restaurant, I'm like, I'll take a little bit of everything. Lieutenant Colonel Rodolfo Orozco brought his wife and kids along to help. I know how it feels to be away from home on holidays. I know how, how it feels to, to not be with your loved ones when you're deployed. For the next few weeks, these airmen are like family. It's why Orozco's small gesture. What flight are you guys? 076. 076, okay. Means so much to 22 year old trainee, Christopher Rodriguez. I was not expecting that when I walked in these front doors. It shows uh, the love and affection and the care that he shows for his squadron. Rodriguez has only been in the Air Force for 10 days. This is his first holiday away from family in Tampa. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard being away from them, but it's, uh, yeah. But he says it's a small price to pay. If I can protect and serve my country, and if it means sacrificing a holiday for that, 
I'm more than down to do it. A warm meal. I don't believe you. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. <laughs> okay, okay. And a comforting face. Happy Thanksgiving. It's a way to say thanks today of all days. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. If you have already eaten or you're just getting ready to sit down and enjoy that turkey, you know there's going to be some leftovers. And there's some things you should know to keep those leftovers fresh and safe for the next time you want to enjoy them. Consumer Reports recommends refrigerating leftovers within two hours and putting them in smaller airtight containers rather than placing them in that original dish you cooked them in and putting that in the refrigerator. If you're not planning to eat leftovers within a few days, you can freeze them. Just be sure you get all the air out of the bag or container. And you can find these and more tips to keep your family healthy with those leftovers right now on KSAT.com. Now, unfortunately, this holiday got off to a bad start for a family in Southtown. We want to show you the scene around 830 this morning on City Street near East Arsenal. There was a house fire there. You see it. Nobody got hurt, but the San Antonio Food Bank's Turkey Trot 5K, that had to be rerouted because firefighters needed space to put out the flames. And a scary scene after gunshots rang out on the city's east side. It happened yesterday on Drew Avenue near I-10 and Martin Luther King Drive. So far, no reports of anybody getting hit with gunfire, but San Antonio police tell us several homes and vehicles were shot up. And so far, no arrests have been made. Now turning to that deadly crash at the U.S. border with Canada, the search for answers continues tonight after two people were killed when the speeding car that they were in crashed right into a security checkpoint. Investigators saying the incident does not appear to be terrorism. ABC's Justin Finch with what we're learning about the people in that vehicle. Surveillance video capturing images of an horrific crash at the Rainbow Bridge. The footage circulating online showing what's reportedly a $300,000 Bentley driving up to 100 miles per hour, launching into the air at a high rate of speed at the U.S. Canada crossing. I've never seen anything like this. The car just exploded. Authorities say the car went speeding through a border checkpoint at the Niagara Falls, New York side of the Rainbow Bridge, struck a booth, went airborne and exploded. Yo, oh my God, are they all right? Law enforcement identifying the driver as a Western New York man whom they say had just left the area of a nearby casino with his wife in the passenger seat, both killed in the wreck. Tourists in the footprint of that crash running for cover. When I saw how the employees at the gift shop reacted, I, I told my wife, Shana, we, we need to go. We need to head back. The incident happening on one of the busiest travel days of the year before Thanksgiving raised concerns about terrorism. Authorities racing to the scene. I'm going to send you over to the custom bridge for a fire that's happening. Uh, fires are already, already there. You're going there to block off road. All four international border crossings between Western New York and Canada closed in response. International flights at the nearby Buffalo Airport temporarily suspended. Uh, we are taking this extraordinarily seriously. Hours later, New York's governor saying the investigation continues, but no signs of explosives were found at the scene. I want to be very, very clear to Americans and New Yorkers at this time. There is no indication of a terrorist attack. The Rainbow Bridge remained closed overnight. All other U.S.-Canada bridges reopened and international flights at the Buffalo Airport have resumed. Authorities say a Border Patrol officer working in the booth when that crash happened suffered minor injuries. The Niagara Falls Police is continuing its investigation. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Outside with Trans Guy, checking on some traffic. A lot of folks probably headed home from Grandma's house after eating turkey dinner, or some people may be still yeah, headed out. I, to I Grandma's think they're house. still enjoying their their yeah. Thanksgiving dinner. Look yeah. at that sunshine, though. Ooh, yeah. need some uh, sunshades if you're going to be out driving around, right? Yep, now. at least over the next hour before the sun goes down. But that's right. It's nice to see a little bit of the sunshine return, especially after we had cloudy, gloomy skies here in the Alamo City this morning, with even some light to moderate rain pushing across the area. The rain has exited our region. No issues weather-wise on the roads later this evening, but temperatures are a bit cool. Mid 50s right now here in San Antonio still have some clouds across the eastern half of the area, but that sunshine really helping temperatures warm up the farther west that you go up or 60s right now in Del Rio. So if you are heading out later this evening, just know that it is going to be chilly. Low 50s expected by 7 p.m. Mostly clear skies here in town, and then we'll see those thermometers fall into the 40s later on tonight. Tomorrow morning, if you're planning on heading out to the 
the stores for any Black Friday shopping plans. It's going to be chilly and we do have some areas of patchy fog expected to develop by sunrise, but then more sunshine will make for a beautiful afternoon that changes by this weekend. We'll tell you why and get you the latest update to the forecast coming up in just a few guys. Mia, thank you. And just a quick reminder, because of the Thanksgiving holiday, any garbage that you have, recycling or organics pickup that's usually done on Thursdays, well, that's going to happen tomorrow instead. And if Friday is usually your pickup day, that pickup day is instead going to be on Saturday. And by this time tomorrow, San Antonio is going to be shining bright with Christmas lights. I can't wait. One of the first signs of the season is the annual HEB Christmas tree lighting over at Travis Park. The 50 foot Nordman fir arrived at Travis Park last week. And when it's lit tomorrow night, it's going to be covered in 10,000 multicultural colored, excuse me, lights, dozens of handmade ornaments. The tree lighting is free and everyone is welcome to go. And there's more than just a tree lighting. You can also check out all the festivities going on over there starting at 4 o'clock. It includes free ice skating from 4 till 530. Can you ice skate? No. No? Mm -mm. Can always, you? No, but it's fun to watch okay. folks that do. <laughs> the tree lighting ceremony starts at 6. We're told Santa is going to make an appearance tomorrow night. Great. Everyone is also invited to stay for a free screening of The Grinch at 7 o'clock. Also happening tomorrow, the 42nd annual Ford Holiday River Parade, and this year's theme is Holiday Stories. The parade starts at 6 o'clock at the Tobin Center, but you can watch it from several spots along the Riverwalk. You can still get tickets for that online, and we have a link for you to buy tickets along with everything that you need to know before you go over on KSAT.com. That's right, San Antonio knows how to bring Ooh. in the holidays. Now, here's one way for you to give this holiday season. From now through December 12th, you can donate a pair of new shoes or socks to the Share the Shoes campaign through, through the organization Zapatos. You can drop off those donations at any of the seven SAPD substations. The campaign needs shoes and socks in toddler sizes all the way up to adult sizes. We have all that information for you on our website, ksat.com. And we've got a few days left in No Shave November. We're raising money for a good cause. We're raising money to help 12 cancer, cancer, cancer foundations. <laughs> it's if, a turkey. It's, yeah, it's all, yeah, it's a turkey, <laughs> and it's this beard, too. If you would like to donate, just scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Last year, we raised over $30,000 to benefit cancer research, treatment, and prevention. And I'm on there, so go ahead and just donate right there to okay. David Sears. Good stuff. Okay. Now, Operation Santa is officially underway at the U.S. Postal Service. This week is going to mark the earliest kickoff ever for the 111-year-old program. It helps ensure that children's letters to Santa make it up to the elves and human helpers to assist with gifts. Now, if you want to participate, here's what the kiddos need to do. They need to use their full name, a return address, a stamp, and Santa's correct address. He only has one address, and there it is there. It is 123 Elf Road, North Pole, 888 Eight, eight. Write that down. Thanksgiving Day just about over. You know what that means. You're going to start looking at your Christmas shopping list. Mm -hmm. We've got some advice when it comes to buying a new television. San Antonio, you were there for me, and now we want to do the same for you. When I shared news with you about my miscarriage, I was flooded with your messages of love and support. In fact, some of you even shared your own experiences with pregnancy loss and infertility. I know it's tough, but the one thing I learned from this is that you're not alone. We're not alone. So many people go through this, and that's why on November 30th, we're going to have a town hall here at KSAT that specifically focuses on infertility and pregnancy loss. We're going to have a fertility expert, uh, a doctor, and we're also going to have a therapist. They're going to be here to answer your questions. So here's what you do. You click on this article, scroll all the way down, type in your questions, and then hit submit. We're here for you. And remember, don't suffer in silence. All right, a few more bites, some deep breaths, maybe loosen up the belt a little bit or the coat. <laughs> you know, it's a little, little tight there. And just like that, you're going to be looking at your Christmas shopping list. That's right. One gift the whole family can appreciate is, of course, a new TV. But before you get one, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has a little bit of some uh, TV shopping advice. 
If you've been thinking about buying a new TV, tis the season. Black Friday is the best time of year to get a new TV. But beware some of the bargain basement doorbuster specials you see advertised. Consumer Reports says they're often from lesser known brands and aren't always worth it in the long run. Remember, you'll be watching that new TV for years. If you're unhappy with the performance or features, you may really regret not spending a little bit more to get something better. You may be able to take advantage of sales to treat yourself to a better or bigger model. Consumer Reports crunched the numbers of three years for its TV ratings and found models from major brands like LG, Samsung and Sony tend to perform better than lesser known brands. So if you're looking to snag a good TV on sale, check for deals early and often and online. And be sure to check out a store's holiday return or price match policy in case you spot a bigger sale later. Target, for one, offers price adjustments for things bought until December 24th. If you don't find what you're looking for, the Super Bowl will bring out more TV sales. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Okay, I've done stories on this before. Apparently, TVs are less expensive right around the Super Bowl because they're trying to get rid of the um, older models, which they're still new because they're in the box. But yeah, just some advice there. Does it really matter what TV you buy as long as we look good on it? Oh, David. You, you could go that route, I guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> David, listen, he's, he got the beard, and now he thinks he's Rico Suave over here. Clearly. So. I mean, clearly. We're having a great time over here. Yeah, thanks for, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, so this morning, it was a chilly, it was a cloudy, and it was a rainy in spots start to Turkey Day here in San Antonio, officially at the airport, just over a tenth of an inch, so not a whole lot in the the rain gauge officially for the Alamo City, but you can see, especially on the south side of Bear County, in between 410 and Loop 1604 near Palo Alto College, just west of Elmendorf, about three quarters of an inch of rain fell over the past 24 hours, estimated here by your authority radar. And really, the higher totals, upwards of about half an inch in spots along the I-35 corridor near Divine, Pearsall, stretching over to Dilly as well. Now, again, we still do have the cloud cover in place across the eastern half of the area. Area starting to clear things out here in San Antonio, but the rain is done for the day. And as we head into the overnight hours, because some of those grounds are saturated, it's not out of the question that we see some patchy morning fog develop. Then plenty of sunshine takes over after that dissipates by mid morning. And we're going to see a beautiful afternoon take shape highs in the mid 60s. More changes, though, quickly move back in on Saturday. We're going to see some more moisture and cloud cover return. Maybe a few isolated showers later in the day and especially over overnight Saturday, but then Sunday our next cold front arrives. That's going to keep the cooler feel around for next week, but also kick up a very healthy north wind. Wind gusts upwards of about 30 miles per hour are expected. So let's time it all out again. You can see the rain is out of our area. Still have some clouds east of I-35. Where that rain is associated with that area of low pressure, far east Texas moving into Louisiana as well. That's going to continue to work away from the Lone Star State. There's that clearing trend later on this evening, but overnight I think we could see a few more clouds start to work in and then there's that patchy fog by five, six, seven o'clock in the morning. So if you are stepping out for any Black Friday shopping plans, heading to the stores overnight or even tomorrow morning, just know you could run into a few spots on area roadways of lower visibility and you're also going to want to bundle up because it's going to be a cold start to our Friday upper 30s in some rural locations, low 40s here in Bear County around 42 officially here in San Antonio. Once we see that fog dissipate, though, by mid morning, plenty of sunshine takes over for the remainder of the day. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon. 61 degrees at lunchtime, 66 that forecast high temperature for us here in town. Closer to 70 degrees the farther south that you go. 68 in New Braunfels, 66 in Bernie, 66 as well over in Comfort. We mentioned that we're going to see a little bit more of the moisture work in on Saturday. Dew points start to rise a bit into the 50s. That also could help spark up about a 30 percent potential for a few isolated showers later in the day and into overnight. Then we keep about a 10 percent chance first thing Sunday morning in the forecast before our next cold front arrives. And there comes that stout north wind gusting upwards of 30 miles per hour by Sunday afternoon, lingering into Monday morning. Notice your temperature is still cool. In fact, chilly by Tuesday, low 40s expected highs in the upper 50s. We'll see the sunshine return a little bit more as we head into the middle of next week, guys. Okay, thank you.
All right, Larry, you know, I've seen a lot of sporting events in my time. That was one of the oddest moments I have ever witnessed in the middle of a game last night. I had to rewind the game <laughs> to make sure I heard properly that Pop was addressing the crowd, asking them not to boo the players. It was mind-blowing, right? So coming up, we're going to hear what Kawhi Leonard had to say about Pop saying don't boo the players. And in high school football, John Jay is repping the 7-6-1-1 in a big way. Coming up. Coach Pop telling Spurs fans to stop booing the players certainly has people talking today. It happened late last night in the first half during the Spurs 109-102 loss to the Clippers when former Spur Kawhi Leonard was at the free throw line. Pop asked fans to stop booing and said it's not classy. Fans booed Leonard even louder after that. KSAT 12 Sports Nick Mantis was there and has more. Hey, Larry, yeah, the 109-102 loss and the 10th loss in a row for the Spurs was overshadowed by the fact that Coach Popovich grabbed that microphone and told Spurs fans to stop booing Kawhi Leonard. And when we asked him after the game the reason why he decided to do that, this is what he said. Well, I think anybody that knows anything about sports, you don't poke the bear. Can you clarify that, though? I, I, I spoke English. I just told you. you anybody that knows anything about sports knows you don't poke the bear. That's my answer. I think it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Again, you know, you don't know what's going on in Kawhi's head. You know, he's done so much for this organization, so um, there's no need to, you know, disrespect him like that. And I guess, you know, it's, it's part of the game, but at the same time, you know, he's, he's a human too. So I, at the end of the day, I respect what Coach Pup did. Well, now the Spurs will look to regroup on Thanksgiving and hopefully snap this 10-game losing streak when they take on the Golden State Warriors in San Francisco on Friday night. From the Frost Bank Center, Nick Mantis, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Nick. So Pop and Kawhi shared a moment on the court after the game. As for Pop's words, Leonard didn't show any emotion when it all went down during his free throws. After the game, he still did not bat an eye while giving Pop and the Spurs props. Uh, I was focused. Uh, I didn't know if it was him or not. I was at the free throw line, but uh, you know, like he said, uh, they're a very classy organization, and um, you know, I'm pretty sure he wants to keep it that way. All right, so the Spurs will play at the Warriors tomorrow night at 9, looking to snap their 10-game slide. It is a great week for those with ties to the 7611. I'm talking about John Jay High School because the football team is in the third round of the UIL playoffs for the first time in program history. And they'll next face Dripping Springs Saturday, 11 a.m. at the Alamo Dome. Jay is located at 7611 Marbach Road, where we met with the Mustangs earlier this week. Oh, it's amazing. We've been working for this, uh, you know, all summer, all offseason last year. And uh, to, you know, fulfill this, uh, I guess you could say, dream. Obviously, we want to keep it going, but this is a, a big step uh, where we want to go. Uh, it's really a blessing, uh, you know, being out here when most teams are already, uh, you know, packed their stuff up and um, don't, don't have the chance to play still, but it's really a blessing to be out here with my brothers and having a good time. In the NFL, the Cowboys currently lead the Commanders 20 to 10 at halftime. We'll have highlights and postgame on the night beat. Mary Rominger is at the game, and the Packers beat the Lions earlier today, 29-22. Lions receiver Josh Reynolds from John Jay had two receptions for 15 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, you know, Kawhi even said after the game that, you know, people show him love if he's out going to a restaurant or stuff here yeah. in San Antonio. They're like, boo him if he's not in a Spurs. Like, exactly. Not classy. <laughs> yes, we'll not. We'll be right back.